بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على عبده ورسوله نبينا وإمامنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد question says بما تثبت رؤية هلال شهر رمضان how does or how do we as Muslims or what is the proper way or the correct way the valid way for the new moon phase or quote-unquote the new moon, because it's one moon, obviously. The proper terminology would be new moon phase. People, they say the, the new moon has been sighted. It's only one moon. Allah mentions one, Qamar. But it goes through phases. As he's mentioned, that we have made the Qamar into manazil. You say mansions, wane, waning and waxing. It's only one moon. So people saying a new moon, يعني تجوزا في العبارة. It's just a, a, a slang. But scientifically, there's only what? One moon that goes through different phases. So how do people, or how is the new moon or the new moon phase to be confirmed? How is it established that the new moon has been sighted or the new moon phase has entered in the month of Ramadan? Now before we get into the answer of this fatwa here, and we'll mention the name of the mufti uh, who get, who's giving this fatwa, I know for sure this is a very long issue of fiqh, like many or if not most, with regards to the sighting of the moon. Uh, and this is with regards to the modern day issues, modern day technology, hmm? modern means of exploration of science, etc. In the lands of the Muslims, whether it be the African continent, whether it be Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, or whether it be in the Middle East. What do you think is the case or the situation in a place like Canada or England, a place like Germany or France, a place like New York, in which the Muslims at best or in most cases, live scattered and tattered. Scattered and tattered. There's a masjid here, it's a school here, it's a group there, there's an association here, there's a, 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 an alliance of imams there, it's a shura there, etc. at best. And obviously there's a huge mixture of people. These people, they claim they're Hanafis, these people say we are the Salafis of America, these people say this is the, the jurist of America, the fiqh council of North America, etc etc., and which is very difficult and burdensome for all of these different Muslims to come together and agree upon the color of grass, unfortunately. So therefore, they say that the moon has been sighted. They say, no, we're going to go with Saudi. We're going to go with North Africa. We're going to go with Turkey. We're going to go with Peru, etc., in which there's no formal central government, no formal central leadership pertaining to Islam. So this is, when we get into the issue the moon has been spotted, the moon has been spotted, Saudi, Turkey, Houston, etc. This is nothing more than a band-aid on a broken arm. And there are many other issues that we go through on a daily basis, Walaikum Salam, in which we're not actually supposed to live like as Muslims, but because there is church and then there is state. Because there's one masjid that refuses to cooperate with another masjid, that refuses to cooperate with another center. At the end of the day, there's no central leadership. Someone who can say, khalas, the khilaf is done, the Muslims are fasting on Wednesday. Whether it was your madhab, what's your view, I'm the ruler and this is the case. It doesn't exist. And in many countries overseas, the same doesn't exist as well. So we live scattered and tattered. They start to eat, they don't, they're doing another day, etc. This is one of the problems that we have. And this problem cannot be solved by just bringing it up in the month of Shawwal, as most of us do. Or even deeper than that, in the technicality of the situation, is only looking for the moon in Shawa, I mean in Sha'ban. Why don't we look for the moon every month? Isn't Islam supposed to be based off of the lunar calendar? Allah, he mentions in the Quran, they ask you about anil ahilla, the crescents. Allah says the moon phases are mawaqit, time frames for the people. You owe me money, Akhi, it's time to pay. The new moon phase has come. This woman was divorced. Hmm? 
this child, this, that, the, the rulings of the deen are based off of time. Allah says, and also especially for Hajj. So the crescent moon, the moon phase is not ex exclusive to Ramadan. But most of the Muslims, especially us who are scattered and tattered, we only begin to talk about it during what? Ramadan. That's it, unfortunately. And this is one of the reasons why we have huh, errors and mistakes. From the theoretical point of view, the, the, the concept of how do we begin Ramadan, how do we see the moon, whose testimony is accepted, and also from the concept of practical experience. If you look for something 12 times a year, what are the chances of you erring and making a mistake? You have a lot of experience, but you only look for something once a year, twice a year. The chances of you making a mistake are what? No question. Everybody understand this? So this is something that we have to realize, and we have to know that many things that we do, Jumu'ahs, Eids, uh, zakah, paying zakah like this, sadaqah al fitr like that, so on and so forth. And then many things that we do on a daily basis, living with the kuffar, socializing with the kuffar, being under the protection of the kuffar, the help and the mercy of the kuffar, etc. Many things that we do on a daily basis, you will be shocked if you were to read the classical books of fiqh, what they actually said about this rule. You'll be shocked what the Hanafi say about this. You'll be shocked what the ulama say regarding what the Muslims in New York City or Philadelphia or Boston do as a normal practice. And many of the ulama say it's invalid, batil, for you to have all of these Jumu'ahs in one city. It's batil for the, to pray like this and to do it like that, to give you zakat like this. This is from the things that we suffer from living in a Western and a secular nominal society. Huh? And it goes even deeper than that, even deeper than that, unfortunately. So therefore, this is just a few words of wisdom and a few words of advice with regards to citing the new moon phase. It should not be done once a year. Huh? Person has to have the proper fiqh, the proper understanding, and the proper practical experience to do it completely. Because Islam has never ever been one slice of a pie. Islam is always a solid whole pie. Every aspect helps and supports the other aspect. Hmm? So that's brief, huh? So the question says, how does the sighting of the new moon phase for Ramadan, how is it confirmed? Hmm? How many people have to see the moon? What are the qualifications of those people? Do they have to be scholars? Huh? Etc. The answer says, As-sahihu annaha tathbutu bi ru'yati shahidin adlin. He says, that which is correct, that which is correct, meaning is that there are other views there are other views, but the view that he chooses to be the most correct is that the moon can be sighted and the commencement of fasting the month of Ramadan with one just witness, one righteous witness, one pious witness, one witness who is reliable and who is religious and upright. He says, as far as a witness who's unjust, who's wicked, or he's sinful, and this word doesn't mean that a person has to be a total evildoer. It doesn't mean that in the traditional books of fiqh, but it may mean a man who shaves his beard. And he may be a great father, he may be a good neighbor, he may be a pious, righteous person. But in the deen, him shaving his face and doing that sin publicly and outwardly over and over again, it makes him a fasik. And his shahada is not accepted. And there are other things that people do on a daily basis. They look as small, simple things, which will cause their shahada to be rejected. So in the deen, there are rulings of who can and cannot be a witness. Who can and cannot be a witness. And who is considered to be just and who is considered to be unjust with regards to a shahada. So, he says, uh, today, and that's very interesting food for thought, how many Muslim men today shave their faces? How many? A few, a handful, or the majority? Hmm? Is that even applicable today in 2018? Can we even say that we can't take the testimony of a shaven, of a shaven person? Can we say that? With so many Muslim men who shave their faces. Al-Muhim, at the end of the day, that's just an example. Any sin, major sin, public sin, that's just an example. Huh? Um, he says that someone who isn't just, his shahada cannot be accepted. 
if he isn't pious and righteous and he isn't reliable, then his shahada cannot be taken. Listen carefully. He says, not in fasting or any other issue of Islam, like we just said, that these rulings are not specific just to what? The month of Ramadan. Remember clearness? He says here, uh, or the second way, obviously, is for Sha'ban to complete a 30-day cycle. In other words, in Islam, there are no 31-day months. That is the Gregorian calendar, the Christian calendar, the Viking calendar, whatever it's called, the common era, the sonar calendar based off of the sun. Huh? That calendar, a month can be 31 days, a month can be 30 days, and a month can be 29 days. Huh? But in the deen, there can only be 30 and 29. So once Shaban reaches its 30th day, then it's automatically Ramadan for everyone. He says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and this is due to the statement of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, Sumu li ru'yatihi, wa aftiru li ru'yatihi, wa in ghumma alaykum fa akminu iddata Shaban thalathin. The Prophet alayhi salam is quoted to have said, Fast when you see it, meaning the new moon phase. And break your fast when you see it, meaning after 29 or 30, uh, not 30, but 29 days. If you see the new moon phase. If it's cloudy, then estimate the month of Shaban for 30. If you cannot see it physically with your eyes, then it is now the month of Ramadan when Shaban completes 30 days. This is the end of the fatwa. And the mufti is Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Umrani, rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, who was from the uh, major judges in the lands of Yemen uh, before he passed away. As far as using the calculation, then that's a very long discussion. If you go back to our uh, fasting and Ramadan playlist on Hadith Disciple, you'll find the conference that we did, I think a year ago, a uh, four-hour conference or, or something like this, in which we brought up some of the most important points with regards to tackling this issue. Can we use the calculation or not? I remember personally many brothers that attended the conference when we were just flicking through the points in the PowerPoint presentation, their eyes became bulging out of their heads. Like, what do you mean? And what are you talking about? How can you say this? I've never heard that. I've never read a fatwa like this. No shake or no person has ever said so on and so on and so forth. And some of the points that we brought up were us living in America as minorities. And the scholars of Islam, they have given a special amount of attention to the rulings of minorities. In which there are core issues that never ever change. There are things that are concrete that don't change. From east to west, New York City to Pakistan, same. And there are many other issues of fiqh which not only do change and can change, but must change. Because the Muslims in Pakistan and the Muslims in New York City, it's like night and day. And obviously numbers bring strength. Numbers bring uh, uh, a person having the ability to be individual with regards to money, with regards to courts, and, and the list of rulings that apply to an elephant and apply to an ant. Everybody understand this? In which we have a swarming number of Muslims and we have a tiny number of Muslims in comparison to the kuffar. Everybody understand this? Uh, with regards to riba and things like this. huh? It's haram here, the mufti would say. And, then, and he would say, over there, it's permissible. Or vice versa. In Pakistan, no way you can do this. No way. Too many Muslim banks. Too many Muslim butchers. Too many Muslims this. Too many Muslims that. But in America, one may say, you may have to do this. So this is one of the points of reflection. Another point of reflection was, and perhaps I'll stop with this, is the fact that we as Muslims depend on calculation for most of our Islamic duties on a daily basis. Finding a Qibla, searching for the Qibla. When you travel, you stop. You're in the airport. You pull out your phone. Or if you have an analog compass, if you're really old-fashioned, that's based off of what? The digital compass is based off of what? When it's time to pray, you don't look for the sun. You don't look for the twilight. You don't look for the dawn. You base it off of what? The calendar. And the calendar is based off of location. Location is based off of? Wahakila. Or even deeper than that, when do people make Hajj? Is Hajj set every year? Yes or no? How was the Hajj set every year? How can it be set if the people have to? Allah says that the moon phase are mawaqit, time periods, and also Hajj, like we just quote from Surah Al-Baqarah. 
So the concept of only dealing with the moon for what? One month. One month is problematic. And obviously many people, they fall into double standard with regards to calculation, etc. Also, we have the concept of uh, what Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin Ta'ala brought up. And I'm not saying this is my view. I'm just getting you to think critically, okay? The concept of when we fast, Saudi Arabia can eat, drink, and have sexual intercourse. And when Saudi Arabia is fasting, we're allowed to eat, drink, and have sexual intercourse. So to say that we follow their view and their timeline and their sighting, and we live in a different country, a different land, a different time zone, is, huh, deserving of thought. Is what? We'll say it's deserving of thought. Everybody clear on this? Let alone the fact that, or somebody may say, well, what about the ijma? Some say there's an ijma. The salaf never ever used the hisab. They never used the calculation, so on and so on and so forth. If there is ijma on that issue, one may say, what would the salaf have said and done if they lived in our time of technological advancement? What would they have said and what would they have done? Or would the salaf even consider us to be Muslims if they saw some of the things that we use for calculation, such as the prayer schedule and the prayer time, the event, etc. So there's all things that have to be thought about carefully and planned out carefully if one wishes to discuss the issue of calculation versus moon sighting, local moon sighting versus international moon sighting, etc. And any fiqh issue that a person wishes to discuss and tackle, he has to do it transparently and not huh, with a full cup. You have to have on a blindfold. Look at the proofs, look at the evidences, analyze the data, and determine the best ruling based off of everything, huh? Allah Azza wa Jalla surely knows best. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa barak ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyina wa imamina Muhammad.